Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of Unity 2D Rigging. My name is Kasanis. Guys, in the last episode we took care of creating the skeleton for this character right here. We didn't go through and set up the skin or anything like that yet, and that's what we're going to do in this episode. Alright everyone, let's get started. Alright everyone, let's get started here. Okay, everybody, today we're going to generate the mesh for this character right here. And to get started, what we have to do, first of all, is bring our, our sprite editor back into view. Now, let's just go over that really quickly one more time. Make sure you've got your character selected so it appears in the inspector. Afterwards, scroll down until you see the sprite editor button. Click that button and it's going to launch a brand new window. This is your sprite editor. And you can just simply dock that wherever you want to work with it. I think I'm going to dock mine right up here where we had it the last time. And I don't want to be in spread editor mode. I actually want to be in skinning editor mode. So I'm going to click the drop down and choose skinning editor. And that brings me up right here to where we were last episode where we built all the bones for our character. And I've got all of these joints set up the way I want them. I know how I'm going to animate this character. So I have all my joints in place. What we have to do now is we have to convert our sprites into geometry. Basically, we're going to convert each one of these sprites here into a, uh, a mesh of some kind. And that mesh is going to be defined by both vertices and edges, uh, internal and external. Uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have enough vertices uh, to be able to animate this character the way we'd like. There's a bunch of different ways we can take a look at this. First thing we could do, we could auto-generate uh, auto our geometry using the auto-geometry button. By pressing that button, it's automatically going to create the geometry for our character. And if we have the, well, we'll take a look in a second, but if we have the weights button pushed, it's ac actually going to generate our weights as well. There's two different things here. There's our geometry and there's our weight. The geometry is the conversion of the sprites into a mesh, and the weights is ensuring those that the mesh itself is connected to individual bones. So we're going to do both of those steps today. We could do auto geometry with weights turned off, and then afterwards do auto weights to automatically convert all of our mesh into skin and attach it to different bones. Or we could simply hit the auto geometry button and automatically do our weights as well, which we're going to do. Below that, we've got edit geometry, create vertices, create edge, and split edge. Let's take a look at creating the geometry first. I'm going to hit the auto geometry button, and it's going to launch this brand new little panel right here. This panel has a number of different options inside of it. Outline detail is the number of vertices we have around our mesh. Uh, uh, alpha tolerance is how close that our mesh is going to be uh, to the alpha itself, depending on, on how, if we've got a gradient of some kind, we want to make sure that we're capturing some of that gradient as well, that, that alpha gradient as well. Subdivide is the number of interior uh, components, the number of interior polygons. And weights, with that checked, will automatically generate the weight for our character as well. That means we'll automatically attach the skin, the mesh, to the, the bones themselves so it becomes a skin on this particular character. If I say generate for all visible, it'll automatically do everything that's on the screen, which is amazing. Now, there's a couple things. There's a bunch of diff different buttons here we just talked about. And if you really wanted to, you could change the outline detail or the subdivision and you'd get more mesh in your character. The only thing you want to be careful of is later on, we're going to have to go through and we're going to have to make sure that mesh is working properly with each joint, with each bone. If you've got too much detail, then your character is going to be very difficult to paint. It's going to take you a really long time to make sure that the skin, the weight itself, is working the way you want it to work. If you don't have enough detail, however, your character won't work properly. So it's a really gentle balance between those two things. I'm going to leave mine as default and we're going to check and see how it works. Okay, so I'm going to hit the Generate for All Visible button. Boom, and there it goes, generating away. And right away, we can see that we've got ourselves some different colors. Our mesh has been created, uh, and we've got all of these different colors along our character. Those different colors represent which bones are influencing the different mesh. All right, and we can see how the mesh is divided already. We can see how much details here. If I scrub in here really close, you can see these individual polygons that have now been created on our character. Each of these have an edge, so there's several edges, and it looks like everything is tries. I didn't actually know that, but it looks like everything is, is uh, triangles. So everything is tries here. It looks like we have three edges and three vertices for each of our polygons. That's interesting. I didn't know that until right now, actually. I didn't realize that it wasn't quads. It's all triangles. So each of these things are going to allow us to adjust it. If we go to the Edit Geometry button, we can go through and we can we can change how this mesh looks. If we go to the Create Vertice, for example, we could, we could break up this mesh slightly differently. 
We could add different things by adding a different vertice within here. We could create ourselves a brand new edge, so dividing things up more. We can see how, how divided up is right now. And after you've done your auto geometry, you want to make sure that it's actually set up the way you like it, to make sure that you've got enough geometry to do the things that you want to do. And it looks like I've got plenty of geometry here with the default settings. And if I check it, because I had the auto weights on, and I know it is because it's already been painted, I can now adjust the different bones. Now we're gonna fix this later on, and we'll talk about this in just a second. But I can adjust the different bones now, and the skin itself is going to uh, move along with the bones. So let's just reset our pose here. And that's gonna be the case for everything. You're gonna wanna go through right now and check to see how your character is working. All right, that's not moving so bad there, not moving so bad. Let's reset our pose. Okay, now the different colors represent the amount of influence that each bone has on any given uh, mesh. So we can see that right now across the eye, there's a lot of different bones affecting the eye. Uh, there's a lot less bones, for example, affecting this eye over here. We've only got one color associated with it, maybe a little bit extra, let's move this around. See, no, no, it's actually all divided, so that's amazing. So some of this is gonna work pretty well and some of it's not gonna work the way we want at all. In this particular case, if I move this nose around, you can see that it's affecting various parts of the eye as well as the face. And I don't want that. So now comes the difficult part when it comes to actually creating the skin, the actual weight for our character. We're gonna have to go through the entire thing and make sure that we've set up the weights the way we want. So only the bones that are, are we want will be influencing a particular mesh. This is where our weights tools are gonna to kick in. We're gonna use our weights tools to go through and adjust the influence on each and every mesh bit based on the bones we want to work on. So the auto weights button would automatically generate weight just like we've done here. It would automatically generate weight based on whatever Unity thinks is the best fit. Weight slider allows us to adjust the weight according to a slider. Weight brush allows us to paint the weights back in vertice by vertice. And lastly, bone influence allows us to make these, these great big changes to, uh, to particular bones. We're actually gonna start with bone influence. That's probably the easiest one to use. So if I click on the bone influence, it's gonna change this panel right over here. And right now we have no sprite selected. Let's start with our head. I actually don't want the head to be influenced by anything except for the head bone. Remember, we went through and we renamed everything, BN head, BN eye, etc., etc. I want to make sure that only, my head is only being influenced by the head bone and nothing else. That means by double-clicking on that mesh and getting these bone influences up here, I can remove the bones that I don't want to be influencing my actual head mesh. So in this particular case, I don't want my mouth to go ahead and, and adjust this uh, particular mesh, so I'm gonna remove it. And I'm gonna do that with each and every one of these bones that are affecting the area that I don't want it to affect. So as I go through and I remove everything, you can see the color itself has now changed. It is only being influenced by the blue bone. And we have to go through and do this for every single mesh. If I double click, for example, this one here is working the way I like it. This one's working the way I like it. That one's working well. This one is also working well. So you're gonna have to go through and figure out which ones aren't working. If I double click, for example, on this eyelid, I don't want it affected by the eye, eye the head. I don't want it affected by the, the bone head. I only want it affected by the BN eyelid. When I move this bone, it's still in the hierarchy. These bones are still in the hierarchy of the bone head. And when I move it, they're all still gonna move with it. But when I animate this particular aspect, this particular eyelid, I don't want, by moving this head around, it's gonna affect this eye as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove BN head. Bang, there we go. We have to go through and do this with every single piece of mesh. Some of them are gonna be good. Some of them are gonna be not so good. So I'm gonna remove, for example, my nose and my pupil. Let's double check this one here. All right, ooh, bunch on here. I'm gonna remove my pupil, remove my eyelid and remove my head bone. I'm gonna go through and do this for every single one. Okay, guys? I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like when I'm all done, okay? I'll be right back. A few moments later. Okay guys, I've gone through and I've removed or added influence with the bone influence tool as I see fit. Now remember, this is really big things. We're either removing entirely or adding entirely new bones to influence a particular mesh. Something that we should talk about and I didn't mention it early on and I should have uh, is 
earlier in the, in the past video, in the last video, we took a look at naming our bones. And if we go to the preview post here for a second, uh, we've gone through and we've named each of these bones. So this is my BN shoulder, this is my BN spine 2, etc. I've gone through and named these bones as I suggested uh, in the last video. BN stood for bind joint. That means that anything with a BN has got mesh attached to it. That was my intention and that's why I named it BN. If you remember, I named one of my bones BX. So this is my BX root bone. My BX root bone, BX means no mesh is assigned to it. There's no mesh associated with this particular bone. So I went through and I removed all influence this bone had on any of the mesh in the scene. This bone is strictly used for placing my character in the scene. That's what it's there for. So I've removed all influence. Overall, everything has worked out pretty well. We can see that my mesh is work looking really nice. If I zoom in here, let's just take a look at the feet. If I bend my legs here, let's bend from the hips and bend the ankles and stuff a little bit, we can see that it's now working kind of like we wanted. Everything is separated. So using bone influence really did a good job for the big stuff. Now what we have to take a look at is the little stuff. You need to go into your character and you need to play with each of the joints to make sure it's kind of working the way you want. So I like all my arms. Do I like the way it's bending at the elbow? Well, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of deformation within here, and we get some deformation in our bones and, and sorry, in our skin when we bend our own arms, right? Uh, what you want to make sure, remember your 12 principle guys, remember that we are trying to do solid drawing and when we start to look, look at solid drawing when it comes to rigging, it means creating an appropriate rig and maintaining volume of your character, staying on model. A little bit of squash within this particular uh, mesh right here isn't so bad. Maybe I'd want to go through and paint it a little bit and that's what we're going to look at right now. So you have to go in to each and every one of your joints and make sure it's influencing the way you want to influence. Okay, go in and check them all out. If I go down here to the feet, and I examine these feet, for example, and I check out the toes, this is where I'm going to want to look and see. Is it squashing too much? Is it squashing too much in this area here, as an example? Are the knees squashing too much or too little? So right now, I'm not sure if I like uh, the way this particular mesh is being squashed. Now, what do I do about that if I don't like the way it's, it's bending? Well, that's where our additional tools come into play. If we take a look at the weight brush, the weight brush is going to allow us to adjust the values at particular vertices. So I can paint around a particular vertice. I can change the influence of a particular bone on a particular vertice. And I've got several different modes in which to work here. I've got add, subtract, I've got grow and shrink, and I've got smooth. Add, subtract, as the name implies, either adds or or adjusts the uh, adds or subtracts the influence from a certain bone in the painted area. Grow shrink is amount of influence around that particular area, and smooth kind of levels out or, or you know tries to level it with the other uh, vertices around it. If we take a look, we've also got the bone that it's being influenced right now. So in this case here, I've got my toe selected, so that's pr uh, proper. Normalize is either on or off, so either working towards one or not. Size is the size of the brush. Right now, mine is set to five. Uh, it's a very small brush. You can increase its value. So let's say I put it like 15, for example. You can see that my brush size has increased and I'm now taking up, uh, I'm covering more vertices. So depending on, on how detailed you want to work, you may want to adjust the size of your brush. The hardness is the amount of gradient it has. Is it going all the way to the edge? Is it is it is there a, a, a gradient, a fall off in, in the amount of brush area you're talking about? And step is the amount of influence that you're either adding or subtracting, as an example. So let's say that I wanted to add influence uh, in this area uh, utilizing this bone. So I wanted my ankle bone to affect this area here. Well, the first thing I have to do is double click to make sure that I've got that particular mesh selected. And afterwards, I don't know if these values are right. These are just the values when I opened up my, <laughs> when I opened up my, uh, my, my weight painting uh, uh, brushes there. If I just now click on an area, you, oh, there, it's not so bad. You can see that I'm, I'm either adding or subtracting a, a particular amount of influence. All right, and I can go through and I can do that with each one. I can say I want, you know, more toe influence here. It's gonna, it's gonna depend. I, I can see how my mesh is deforming. All right, this is a. Uh, this is a very delicate operation. This takes a long time. If you have a particular way you'd like something to work, then you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to adjust these weights accordingly.
accordingly slowly over time. Let me go back to this one over here for a second. Slowly over time. And again, I've, I've got these on pretty high numbers, these steps. I might want to adjust this down to like, let's say 10. So I'm only moving it a little bit at a time as opposed to the massive amount that I was moving it. All right. And you're going to kind of get what you like out of this. I don't know. It's going to take a long time to do this, and I'm not going to make you guys watch me do this as I'm going forward. This takes a super, super long time to get it the way you want. All right, guys? So go through right now. I'm going to step off, go through, and paint the weights. You can obviously do it internally, so I can adjust anything internal. Any vertice will be adjusted by your weight painting tool. Okay, so that was the add subtract. If we take a look at the, for example, the smooth, it's going to kind of smooth it out with its neighboring values and you can see this is much much less that it's actually moving in here it's kind of adjusting it on its neighboring stuff as well and i'm just clicking and dragging that's how i'm influencing it okay guys take your time go through paint the character the way you want and afterwards we're going to come back here and take a look at what we've got all right everyone i'll talk to you all in just a minute a few hours later Okay, guys, I have finished painting up my character, and he is moving exactly like I want him to. Everything is done, and I am happy. Once that's true for you, go ahead and hit your Apply button. That's going to save all the changes that you've made. If you forget to hit the Apply button, it's going to remind you when you try and switch out of the screen anyway, but don't forget because that is what's saving everything you've done. So right now, everything we've done is only located within our Assets folder. We've manipulated the character that we brought into the scene. What we haven't done yet is actually added into the hierarchy, so our, our character is not anywhere within our game yet. At this point in time, you can go ahead and drag it in place. If I switch over to the scene view, there's my character right there with my character selected. There's my character right there. All of the joints and everything else have moved into the scene with me. That's going to make it really easy to animate because later on we're going to be animating those bones. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at setting up our character with IK so that our character is operating properly. And we'll talk about what IK means in the next episode. We'll also go through and adjust our bones so they're working the way we expect them to work for animation. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful. I hope your character is looking super awesome. I hope you guys are staying safe in this time of pandemic. I'm stuck at home. You're stuck at home. Why not watch some videos, eh? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see your comments. I want to see the characters you're working on. I hope you guys are staying safe. All right. If you didn't like this video, that's perfectly fine. Give me a thumbs down. Let me know what you'd like me to change. This channel is not for me. I know how to do this stuff. I'm doing this stuff for you guys. So I'm hoping that you're enjoying it. If you're not, let me know. Tell me down in the comments. Hey, change this, change that. Change your voice, whatever it is you'd like me to do. All right, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.